Education is the process by which the knowledge, the culture, and the way of life of a particular people is passed on from one generation to the next in a deliberate way. It's what happens when a people recognizes the goods that they have, whether it be knowledge, wisdom, technology, art, ritual, religion, literature, architecture, whatever, and that they want to ensure out of concern for future generations and their descendants, that they too will be able to access those same goods that they have inherited and developed themselves so that they won't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. It starts by identifying those goods, prioritizing them, and then deliberately transmitting them. And if that transaction is successful, such that a people can identify the goods to be transmitted, aims to do so, and then does so, and consecutive generations receive that knowledge and honor it in such a way that they would even be willing to invest their own resources into continuing that same cycle, um, then what you have is exactly what tradition is. Tradition means identifying the things that we've developed that are good and worth preserving and then handing them on by transmitting them for the benefit of those who receive them. This is what tradition means and it should help us to appreciate that education by its very nature is traditional. That is its purpose, its telos, its end to transmit the knowledge and the discoveries of our ancestors. This is the fundamental aim of tradition and education has no other purpose than tradition. Tradition cannot be divorced from education and I don't know how to emphasize this point any more clearly. Without tradition, education, there's no point to it. It loses its purpose. Without a tradition to transmit, education becomes something else entirely like, like indoctrination or manipulation. Which is why when people who are supposed educators prioritize progress, change, novelty, evolution, or even revolution or the overturning of tradition as the fundamental aims of education, they A, reveal that they don't understand what education is and probably couldn't provide a cohesive definition for this very thing that they're supposedly practitioners of, and B, are undermining their, their own efforts as a result. Because when you perform the work of education, you aren't just communicating the content of a curriculum, you are setting an example in how you do it. But if as you do so, you demonstrate that you hold the knowledge and the tradition of the past in contempt, then you are demonstrating to your pupils that education itself is a self-refuting enterprise and probably shouldn't be taken very seriously. And this is the kind of education that I received, which is probably why so many of my peers treated it with contempt. They learned to do so from the example of the very people who were supposed to be educating us. We weren't stupid. We could tell that ideas from the past were being treated in a contemptuous way. And since the very people who were trying to educate us along with their ideas were quickly becoming part of the past, we learn to do as they did and treat their content with skepticism. And if educators refuse to honor the knowledge that came down to them through their own education, then it merely becomes a process of picking and choosing your own particular fancies and then trying to indoctrinate students in them while refusing to share their own knowledge that they themselves inherited and benefited from. Any supposed educator who embraces this approach to education in the name of progress should have the privilege of educating other people's children and the trust that is placed in them revoked. Progressives or, or so-called progressives have no business in education. And yet from what I can tell from my own experience and maybe just the smell in the air, the field of education is dominated by such as these and is therefore in desperate need of reform. So maybe if you're not convinced by this or you're having trouble following why I would say that progressive education is self-refuting. Let me try to offer an example that will hopefully frame this a little bit better for you. So imagine a piano teacher who has been taught how to play the piano by being educated in the accumulated knowledge theory, techniques, and styles of all the masters that came before him. And through that process, he becomes a great piano player to the degree that he can even introduce some innovations of his own. And then from that experience, he decides to become a teacher of future players. But because of his status as a great pianist, his pride swells, and he forgets to acknowledge that the very reason that he is a great pianist is because of all of what had accumulated from countless great pianists who preceded him 
is what he inherited. In other words, he's the beneficiary of a tradition. And this same arrogance deceives him into thinking that he deserves the credit for his abilities, that he discovered himself how to become a great pianist, and that what is most important and what what is most important about what he can offer to future generations is the novel innovations that he has developed. So in his blindness, he disregards the tradition that formed him into what he is today and only passes on his own idiosyncratic techniques in honor of himself above all else. It's as though he has scaled some great summit by sitting on the shoulders of giants. And then when the untrained or those who haven't been up there themselves ask him, how can they reach the summit too? Instead of telling them how he got there, he simply relays what it was that he saw while he was up there as if it was his own accomplishment and thereby refuses to help them find out how to scale the summit themselves and see that same sublime vi vision for themselves. Something like this is how we end up with a preference for what is novel or quote unquote innovative and different in contrast to what is tried, tested and true in tradition. It's this narcissistic preference for our own unique qualities and a refusal to acknowledge the wealth that we inherited to give us such insights. It's like someone who is rich because they inherited a fortune from their parents and their grandparents and as a result they convince themselves that they are the reason that they are so wealthy, that they have the knowledge to build such wealth. And then so they go out and try to build more wealth with the wealth that they've got. But because they have no idea what they're doing, they just, they end up squandering it and are therefore unable to pass it on to future generations as they themselves inherited it. In a kind of perverse way, progressive education is a lot like greed. It's a refusal to share the wealth that you've inherited and instead keep it all for yourself while simultaneously passing on a substitute or a counterfeit for the real thing and then congratulating yourself for being so generous. Thanks for watching. The reason I can continue making content like this is because of the generous support of my viewers. If you feel called to support this work, then consider joining the Reinforcements, which is my online community. There are multiple tiers, including free access for those who can't help financially but still want to join. You can join up at www.brianholtworth.ca. Certain levels will also get a free gift basket from Glory and Shine, who is a family-owned Catholic bath and body products company whose beard balm I'm wearing right now. It's like aromatherapy for your face. Even if you don't join, they make amazing products. So check them out at gloryandshine.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe. You don't have to agree with everything I said to get value out of these kinds of conversations. So be sure to subscribe to be edified or challenged. There's value in both.